now we share a very important problem or challenge, you may look at it in either sense, which nature poses, whether it is in discrete time or continuous time. The ideal system that we want to realize are irrational, we shall see that very soon. The ideal system, when you put down ideal specification for what we want to do, the corresponding system turns out to be irrational. And the whole game that we are going to play for several lectures, all over the subject of filter design, is to approximate this irrational ideal by rational systems. The rational systems, you see nature in engineering, this is probably a frequent occurrence. What we want is what we cannot realize. What we can realize is often not what we want, but we have to draw a compromise between the two. That is often the case in engineering and technology and discrete time processing is no exception. Anyway, let us look a little more at rational systems and specifically linear constant coefficient difference equations. Now, you see we have a linear constant coefficient difference equation. Let us take for example, the linear constant coefficient difference equation that we had a minute ago. Y n is 5 by 6 y n minus 1 minus 1 by 6 y n minus 2 plus x n minus 1 by 4 x n minus 1. Now, I want to make a few remarks about solving such difference equations. By what I mean by solving is you are provided with the value of x n over a certain interval of time. So, let us take an example. Let us assume, assume that x n is known. known for n equal to let us say capital N 1 to n equal to capital N 2. In particular, capital N 1 might be 0 and capital N 2 might be say 20 or 100. right? So, what we are saying is in a sense is that you know the input over a certain interval of the natural domain. Okay? the input is known over an interval of the natural domain. The output is known for some pre-specified point. Example, suppose n 1 is equal to 0, n 2 is equal to 20. We continue on this. We are given y of minus 1 and y of minus 2. So, you know the what we call the initial value. and we wish to obtain y of n for n equal to n 1 to n 2, namely 0 to 20. How would we proceed in this case? Well, the approach to proceeding is to for a moment assume that this difference equation lasted forever. So, the approach is a 
assume the difference equation lasted forever, assume the L double C D held forever. Find the corresponding system function. What do you mean by the corresponding system function? The ratio of y z to x z. And what is that corresponding system function here? You know it. It is 1 minus 1 fourth z inverse divided by, we, we began with 1 minus 1 third z inverse into 1 minus half z inverse. Identify the pole identify the poles. Identify what are called the system poles now. Where are the system poles? Here they are at one third and half. Now, of course, we are only going to deal with the solution of such equations when the input also has a rational or you know the input is also a sum of what are called poly x terms. So, we shall assume the input is also a combination of what are called poly x terms. I will explain what a poly x term is. Poly x refers to polynomial multiplied by exponential. So, for example, you could take the poly x term example of a poly x term. Two n squared plus five n plus one multiplied by say one fifth raise to the power of n. This is the poly x term. This is the exponential part of the term, and this is the polynomial. Polynomial in the natural domain variable. Poly comes from here and x comes from here. A polynomial in the natural variable multiplied by an exponential is a poly x term. Now, of course, you can see that a pure exponential is also a poly x term with the polynomial of degree 0. A pure polynomial is also a poly x term with the exponential factor equal to 1. A constant is a very special case of a poly x term with the degree of the polynomial equal to 0 and the exponential factor equal to 1 and so on. So, all these are covered in the class of poly x term. So, when you have a poly x input as we call it, that means an input which comprises of a sum of poly x terms, we can solve this linear constant coefficient difference equation very easily. What we do is to identify what we call the input poles now. Now, here for example, the pole corresponding, so the pole corresponding to this poly x term is one fifth but with a multiplicity of 3 that means one fifth taken 3 times why is it taken 3 times because there are 3 coefficients in the polynomial the polynomial is of degree 2 so it has 3 degrees of freedom the constant part of the polynomial the first degree part and the second degree part so, as many as are the degrees of freedom in the polynomial, 
so many times is that pole repeated. If the polynomial is of degree 0, of course, that pole occurs with multiplicity 1. That means, it occurs only once. If the polynomial is of degree 1, that pole occurs twice. If that polynomial is of degree 2 as we see here, that pole occurs 3 times and so on and so forth. Now, of course, you must remember, even if you have just an n squared term and a 0 degree term, you must still assume that you have a repetition 3 times. The pole is repeated 3 times. It is the highest power of n that matters. Right? So, the essentially the multiplicity of the pole is 1 more than the highest degree of highest power of n in the polynomial. Is that correct? So, suppose you apply, now let us take the simple case. Suppose you apply this poly x term as the input x n, of course, valid only in that region 0 to 20. Now, a remark about how large or how small that region can be. Large is no problem, it can go all over the integer axis. Small is a problem. You cannot make it smaller than the degree of the difference equation. That means, the highest pass sample that you need to deal with. In fact, here the you know you need to deal with two pass samples. So, you cannot just assume that this, this difference equation holds for three samples and then solve it by the approach that we are using. If the length over which this difference equation holds is large enough to cover the span of the difference equation. Span means, how many samples you are involving at a time then it is valid to use the procedure that we are describing. Otherwise, there is no solution, but to operate the difference equation step by step. So, of course, you know y n in terms of y n minus 1, y n minus 2, you know, let us go back to that difference equation. So, if you look at it, you can always sit down and solve it term by term, you know, let us go back to this equation here. So, here you have y n is 5 by 6, y n minus 1, minus 1 by 6 and so on. So, you know, you, if you know y, y of minus 1 and if you know y of minus 2 and you know x of 0 and you know x of minus 1, then of course, I can find y of 1 or y of 0 and so on. Once you know y of 0, you can go one step further, you can find y of 1. So, you can keep solving this difference equation step by step and obtain the output that you can do when the difference equation is valid only for too small an interval, but that is not a practical way of doing it. when it is valid for a very long time and what, what we are describing is a process for solving it when it is valid for a very long time. If it is valid for a very small time, it is not worth doing all that we are talking about. right? Anyway, so long enough means long time means long enough for all the samples to be covered, samples that are involved. Now, in this case, we say the system pole. are at one third and half. The input poles and you know with each pole you write its multiplicity. The input poles are at one fifth and with a multiplicity of 3. Now, we write down what are called the union poles. we write down what are called the union poles. Now, what we mean by the union poles are the poles of the system union with the poles of the input. Now, how do you take, now I said union, not union means when you have a common pole, you must bring them together. Now, of course, in this case, there is no common pole, right. But suppose, we also had one more, we had a one third with a multiplicity of 1 here also in the input, we introduce that too. That means, the input is a combination of two poly x terms, a one fifth to the power of n multiplied by a polynomial of degree 2 plus a one third to the power of n multiplied by a polynomial of degree 0. Suppose, that the input is a combination of two poly x terms, what would be the union poles? Now, look for the common poles, which are the common poles? One third, one third is common. Now, one third occurs with multiplicity 1 here and multiplicity 1 here. So, in the union it will occur with multiplicity 2. 
half occurs with multiplicity 1, 1 fifth occurs with multiplicity 3, this is the set of unions. Is that clear? Now, once you have the union poles, you know the form of the output immediately, you know the form of the output immediately. What is the form of the output? The form of y n, now take each pole in turn one third occurring with a multiplicity of 2 contributes a 1 0 plus a 1 1 n times one third to the power n. Half with a multiplicity of 1 contributes a 2 0 into half raised to the power of n. Is that correct? And one fifth with a multiplicity of 3 contributes a 3 0 plus a 3 1 n plus a 3 2 n squared into one fifth raised to the power of n. This is the form of y. Is that, is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, any questions on this so far? This is a very important point. If you understand this, half the job is done. Now, all these a's, a 1 0, a 1 1, a 2 0, a 3 0, a 3 1, a 3, all of them are unknown constants. We have to determine the constants. How do we determine the constants? We determine the constants by imposing the constraints that are given to us. Right. So, the constants are determined are determined from the system constraint. right. Now, in fact, what do you mean by the system constraints? One constraint is the L double C D itself. So, put this y n back into the L double C D and some constants will emerge on their own. Then, take into account the conditions on y that are given to you some more of these constants will be constrained. Is that right? So, I give you a little exercise to help you understand this concept better. The exercise is as follows. Obtain y n for n equal to 0 to 100, given that y n minus 5 by 6 y n minus 1 or you know we will do the same thing 5 by y n is equal to 5 by 6 y n minus 1 minus 1 by 6 y n minus 2 plus x n minus 1 by 4 x n minus 1 and x n is equal to 1 by 5 raised to the power of n for n equal to minus 1 up to 100. 
y of minus 1 is equal to 2 and y of minus 2 is equal to 4. Okay, so, I leave this as an exercise for you to work out using the process that we have just described. All right. Now, one remark about resonance. 